So as you guys saw in the last episode, Pete and Dave tried to be funny guys and they violated the car. Looks like the Speed Academy guys had nothing else better to do. But that's okay, because we're gonna get back at them this time. We're gonna give Connie a little nose job. Is this manifold gonna be more awesome than the it's CR gonna be more awesome CRX than the manifold? Uh, There's also some top secret stuff we wanna to add to it. Okay, I've got our header all tacked together. I am ready to start welding it now. To do that, I'm gonna break my tack welds on the inside of my head flange so I can pull the head flange apart from my runners. And then I'm gonna pull all my runners out of my collector, separate it all. Uh, I'm gonna cap off each end and then back purge the inside and then weld each piece individually. Let's get started. Anytime you're welding stainless steel, it's important to back purge, especially when you're getting full penetration through your material. This will prevent any oxidization on the inside of your tubing and it help promote flow, but also create a stronger weld and prevent cracking. All right, so do you wanna measure these to see if they're close to, does it matter to you? Well, it didn't matter to you when I started, so it wasn't. It didn't, really but I mean, since it's here, they, they look very similar in length to each other. They're close. They're very, very yeah, they're very close. Uh, yeah, we need a little tape measure. Yeah, let's do a little tape measure and just measure it. This was never really designed to be an uh, equal length header, but if it is, bonus. Well, it's not gonna be. This is just a rough estimate. So that's about 32 inches. That's about, probably about 35. That's about 35. Two and three, actually, you want to be the same length and one and four. Actually, no, it's pretty close. It's actually longer. So that one's like 35 as well, a little over 35. Next step is I'm going to bolt this down to a plate to make sure it's nice and flat, reassemble everything, and then begin welding. Uh, I'm gonna shape these runners to the inside port shape of the head flange so that they match, and then uh, begin welding the head flange to the runners. Actually, no, I don't know if it's, I don't think it's right. No, it's not. That's our number four. One eternity later. Something like that. There it is. Do you have a reference point for where these sat? Well, I, I'm looking at the old tack welds in there, right? Oh, okay. Like a, I need to pull them in a little further. Get as close to those tack welds as yeah, possible. Yeah, where the tack welds have been broken, right? Mm -hmm. So this one's gotta pull in further. This one's pretty close. There's a degree of flexibility with these collectors, right? Mm -hmm. And plus the runners are nice and long, so they're gonna wiggle around a bit. We gotta mess with these guys. Oh, there it is. That's what I was looking for. What I'm doing now is I'm going to shape each of the runners individually to the shape of the exhaust port. It's a rectangular port, we've got round tubing. So I did a little bit of shaping to fit that, that runner into each exhaust port when I did the initial mock-up. Now I wanna finish this off before I start welding this flange together to these exhaust tubes. Now I wanna, before I weld this fully, I wanna make sure that these are shaped well and, and it, there's no gap in between that tubing and that wall of that exhaust flange. So I'm gonna tack weld a little bit and then I'll shape a little bit and then I'll tack weld a little bit more until I get it stretched out to meet that outer wall of that flange. And you can see on some of these there's a little bit of a gap so I'm gonna basically stretch that tubing out uh, to close that gap 
Now to do that, I'm just gonna use a couple of ball peen hammers. I'm gonna tack weld start where my old tack weld is before I broke it apart. I'm gonna tack weld that back in and then I'm gonna move over to this corner and I'm gonna take a, my ball peen hammers and I'm gonna shape that corner so that it closes that gap in there. And I'm, after I've done that, I'm gonna make another tack weld in this corner before I move to the next corner. So the reason I do that is if I don't keep this uh, from moving, keep it stationary, it's gonna wanna pull away from there. So if I've tack welded here and I, and I shape this corner and then don't tack weld it and I move over to the next corner and I start shaping it, it's gonna, it's gonna change the shape of that. It may wanna pull away from that, the wall of the flange. So I wanna make sure I, I tack weld the thing as I move around and shape it. And that'll help, help stretch it out a little bit and, and keep that gap to a, a minimum and it'll, it'll get me the best result in my weld. Sometimes you can get away with just drawing it in with the pliers, but you can see there that, that gap looks a little bit better. And I'll put my needle nose pliers over here in the corner just to help make sure it stays nice and snug and keep that gap as small as possible. So I'm gonna add another little tack weld and then I'll move right into the corner. So now I've got a little bit of a straight line going towards that corner. There's still a little bit of a gap there. You can see just around here, there's a little bit of a gap. I wanna close that up. So I'm just gonna come in with my ball peen hammer here and shape that a little bit. I just banged it out as I went along. I would tack weld behind where I was shaping until I got a background to the start. Now I'm ready to do the next runner. So I've tack welded and reshaped my runners to fit my head flange. I just wanted to make sure that everything fits back together in the car properly. I've got good clearances everywhere. Now I'm gonna take it all back out, finish welding my head flange, and then move on from there. So now I've got all my tubing match ported to the shape of my exhaust ports on my head flange, tack welded in place. I'm ready to weld my head flange to this tubing. Now I'm gonna weld the inside of these, but I'm gonna do that secondary. First, I'm gonna bolt my head flange down to my heat sink plate here, and then I'm gonna weld around the outside, and then I'll let it cool down completely, disassemble it, and then I'll weld each runner on the inside of the flange. This plate is a plate that I've had for a while. Obviously, it's seen a few different uh, patterns in it. If I go back to an old pattern that I've used in the past, I've got it stamped in the plate so I can just bolt that head flange on and then use this as my heat sink. It helps prevent that flange from warping. As an alternative to this, if you don't have a nice heavy steel plate you can drill and tap some holes into, you could potentially use a spare head if you have a spare head lying around and just bolt that flange right directly to the head. When you have a tricky situation like this where it's really hard to get to, like, I so mean, I, what, your, what your plan is. I've positioned this uh, and I'm trying to plan out where I want to start and where I want to finish. So I want to make sure that I have good access to um, where I want to weld. So I've got this tilted up on an angle. I've got the bottom of the plate taped off. I've got it back purging. And I want to start each weld on the front of the runner and run underneath across the flange to the other side. So I want to make sure I have access to each point. So down at this end here, I don't really have that great access. I, I may have to put a 
a shorter tungsten in and a shorter back cap so I can twist that torch a little bit up to get a better angle to do this last runner because I can't really reach it from this side either very well. So try and plan it out and I'm going to weld uh, continuously, uh, not all in one pass, but I'll weld a little bit. Then I'll move to the next runner, weld a little bit and so on. And then I'll go back to the first runner again because it's had a little bit of time to cool down and then I'll continue. I'll remove the screws as I weld past the screw. As soon as I get past, I'll put the screw back in and then continue to the next runner. And eventually I wanna have one continuous uh, bead that runs around the entire runner on the flange um, from one starting point and it travels all the way around in one direction. Sometimes you can't do that. You have to go from both directions to, to meet at a point in the middle. But if you can do it in one direction, uh, that's usually the preferred method. One more thing. So I have, have noticed. noticed everything is assembled. Yeah, I've got everything assembled because I want to make sure that when I weld this together, um, it's going to come apart after it cools down. Um, I could weld it on a part, but disassembled, but uh, then these runners might move around a bit on me. So I want to make sure that everything's going to be in its full assembled state uh, when I do this weld. Then after that, I'm going to add my uh, little spring tabs to hold my collectors together and uh, we'll be ready to move on to the rest of the exhaust. And also you're welding the outside before you weld the inside. Yes, I'm going to weld the inside, or sorry, I'm going to weld the outside first just because, I don't know, personal preference, because I'm able to, to clamp this down to a plate, perform that weld first, and then I'll go to the inside. I'll try and weld the inside in a way that uh, when it's still warm, I'll be able to clamp it back down to the plate to allow it to cool down properly uh, in a flat position. What do you think? I think all the welds on the head flange are done on the outside. Now it's time to move to the inside. What do you think of your welds? They're fantastic. I'm very happy with them. They should last for a long time. We'll put it to the ultimate test. We will heat this baby up. Now that I've welded the outside of the flange, I'm just going around the inside now before I do these welds to make sure that there's no gaps or anything. Checking to make sure that uh, my back purge worked well and that I have good penetration. So our collectors, we want to be able to pull this apart to get it in and out of the car. Now to hold this together when it's in the car, um, I want to make sure that it, this isn't going to pull apart and separate. So I'm just going to add some of our spring tab kits. So I'm going to put one on each runner. And then uh, just weld them in place. Now to space this out, I'll start with one side. Right, so that one's gonna be welded. And I'm gonna wanna make sure that I have to stretch this spring to get it to the other side. So I'm gonna take a, a pair of um, needle nose vice grips and I'll clamp onto this, the hook here, and I'll pull this in so that it just falls into the hole but I want to be able to make sure that I'm able to access this spring with those pliers while this is all inside the car. So I know I have clearance on, on this side for, for these two springs, and then this one's gonna sit here on top of that one. 
and then the bottom one underneath back here I'll unfortunately I'll have to put it underneath but I should be able to get access to that from underneath with the pliers to be able to assemble that and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other one probably on the sides or the bottom possibly so that I can do that from underneath when I weld these together I want to make sure that I'm not welding one of them on top of the joint so if you weld this on top of the joint, if you get full penetration through this tube, it's going to uh, weld into this one. You don't want to do that. So you want to make sure that you have it so that your tabs are on each side of the expanded tube. That's your full joint, right? So if I get full penetration here and I'm back purging, it's not going to be a problem. I'll still be able to pull this apart. The header is almost done. Aaron just finished welding it up and uh, I see you're bolting it down again because you don't want it to warp, right? Yeah, I've welded the inside of the flange and because it's still warm, I want to bolt it down while it's still warm so that when it cools off, it cools off in a flat position. I've got all my springs added. I've got my head flange welded. It's cooled off now, so now I can take this apart put it back in the car and then uh, finish off the end of the header where we're gonna add some uh, torque magic here down at the end. So there you have it. We have a fully welded header, but this puppy's not ready to get fired up quite yet. We have the rest of the exhaust to finish and Aaron keeps hinting about this torque magic that he's gonna be adding. I'm gonna make sure we cover that on the next episode. Until then, make sure you head over to the Speed Academy channel to see what Dave, Peter, and Jay are up to. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do it. You really don't want to miss the next one. Catch you guys then.